evening, Second Baptists. We want to welcome you to our time of Sunday School. Today we will continue our second part of our lesson on the whole armor of God. And this is the conclusion of lesson one to girding up your loins with truth. In today's lessons, uh, Sister Thelma Vaughn will conclude by encouraging and lifting us up as believers to ensure that we are strengthened by the truth as it relates to God and his purpose for us. So gird yourselves to hear this truth today. And remember, may God's truth strengthen you. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School for uh, January 16th, 2022. I'm so glad that you're here and we have an opportunity to study together one more day. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for this day. Thanking you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy and your patience and your love. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to study with you, Lord God. We believe, Holy Spirit, that you will guide and direct what is said and what is done so that your word goes forth and is received. We pray, Lord, for that fertile ground that the seed can take root in. We pray, Lord, that your, your, uh, you will touch this lesson today so that it is, it is useful and, and, and helpful for all who hear. We pray, Lord, that you will make clear your words, Lord, so that they can become a part of our lives to help us to be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So today we're uh, continuing to look at the whole armor of God and recognizing that the believer's life is a battleground. Our anchor scripture for this lesson is Ephesians 6 and 14. But we want, I want us to take a, a, a little bit more of an understanding of what goes on. So I want you to look at Ephesians, turn to chapter 6, and we're going to back up a little bit. We're going to go back to, let's go back to uh, verse 11. And we'll read down to 14. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 reads, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We therefore, therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So, the first article of armor that Paul describes is the belt of truth. So when we consider the spiritual battle that every believer faces, it's apparent how essential the truth is. Ephesians 6 and 13 says, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. We are to be girded up with truth, and that is to be firmly established, established in the truth of God's word. Paul's view of this truth must have been rooted in God's word. We learned last week that the belt was the first part of the armor that the soldier put on. 
and that the other pieces were kept in place by the belt. So spiritually, God's word must be the binder, the anchor that holds us or allows us to be able to stand. The word is what we stand upon. That is the truth. God's word. Ephesians 6, 14, that's our anchor scripture. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. John 17 and 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. This comes from the prayer that Jesus prayed for his disciples and for believers who would be coming after them. Not the Lord's Prayer, but Jesus' Prayer, which is found in John chapter 17. And I'd like you to take a look at that because I want us to get a little bit more of that. This is what Jesus was praying for us. This is what he was praying for us to, to be able to uh, hang on to. Uh, starting at verse 14, John 17, starting at verse 14, says, and this is Jesus' words, it's in red, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. So Jesus is praying for his disciples and for us that we would be able to function in this world considering we are not of this world. And that's a good thing for believers to know. This is not our home. We are aliens here, <laughs> so to speak. We belong with Christ. We are a part of the heavenly kingdom. But we are in this world for a purpose. We are in this world to be influencers. That's one of those words I heard my grandchildren talking about with the internet, being influencers. That's supposed to be something. Well, as Christians, we are to be influencers for those who are around us. We may not be able to reach different countries and so forth, but we have our own world. We have our own sphere of influence. And in that sphere of influence, we have to be so girded up with truth that we can spread it to them. We can share it with them. Jesus prays for his disciples and believers to come because of the evil they will face in the world, the battleground. This is therefore foundational. That belt of truth is foundational to all the other pieces of the armor, the um, uh, breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. That truth has to be in place for those other pieces of the armor to hang right, to fit right. Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. His truth redeems us from the power of sin. His truth releases us from past sin. So when we talked about the soldier's belt, 
that he girded around his, his loins. That belt, aside from holding the other pieces of armor in place, that belt was constructed in such a way that he could have freedom to move. It, it, uh, he could tuck his tunic into it, and then he could run and, and move about freely. Well, the soldier's belt provided freedom. And we are kept free from enemies, from the enemy's lies, by having a clear understanding of God's word, his truth. We need to know what God says, because the enemy is going to throw lies at us from the left and the right. He will be throwing stuff at us, and nowadays he has multiple ways to throw it at us, not just from other people. We get it uh, on uh, um, our televisions. We get it on the Internet. We get it with the Twitter and the, and the YouTube and, the, and the all, all directions. Lies that are circulated because the enemy is like a roaring lion looking to see who he can grab, who he can snag up, who he can trip up. The truth redeems us from the power of sin. Because the truth says that when I sin, I have an advocate with the Father. If I ask for forgiveness, he forgives me and it's done. That's freedom. That allows us to not be bound by shame and guilt and, 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 and condemnation. Remember um, uh, John three seventeen. You know, for God so loved the world. He came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We're free from that. He releases us from our past sin and the power of sin. The enemy has no control if you know the truth. If you know what God's word says, even when an untruth comes your way, regardless of its source, and sometimes... Untruth will come to us from sources we expect to be spouting truth. But if the word is in us, when you hear it, it's going to send off an alarm. You say, that, it's, that, that, that's not right. That can't be right. How do you know it can't be right? Because you know what he said. You know what the word said. That's our truth. That's what holds us together. Just as the soldier's belt provided freedom of movement, you are kept free from the enemy's lies by being in God's armor. To be girded with truth is to be truthful, genuine, sincere before God and others. It's the freedom to be your authentic self. The freedom to be real. This involves not allowing deceit and unconfessed sin to separate you from the fellowship with God. It also involves being a person of integrity and not a hypocrite. Lord have mercy. It says that belt of truth gives us the freedom to be real, to be genuine, to be sincere. We can be real. When we're girded with God's truth, we don't have to try to adjust ourselves to fit every situation. You know, there's the work self, the family self, the church self, the social self. I'm one person if you find me in a social situation. I'm a totally different person if you meet me at work. I'm a different person still if you find me in church. And then, Lord have mercy, the self that shows up at my house, at home. If I am different in all of those situations, something is not right. I, I think that one of the worst blemishes on the body of Christ is believers who appear to be one thing in church 
and turn to be something else when they go home. Because you know, the people that live at your house see you in all of those situations. See you in all of those circumstances. And expect, if what you're saying is true, why isn't it true all the time? We have an opportunity to be real, to be people of integrity. We can be who we are, the same everywhere. John 8 and 44 says, Satan attacks truth with lies, but he's the father of all lies. This is where John 8 and 44 comes in. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He especially focuses on attacking God's promises, casting doubts upon them, like he did in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, the serpent said, did God really say that? That's what he said to Eve. In Genesis 3, 3 and 4. Well, I like, I'd like for us to get the precursor to 3 and 4. So let's look at Genesis 3, and we're going to go back to the first verse. Because it describes who we're talking about here. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he, I'm sorry, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. And here's verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. And, and look at verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil evil. If the enemy can get you to doubt God's integrity and goodness, it's a slippery slope downhill from there. One of the enemy's common tactics is telling us lies. Lies. Satan specializes in lies. He wants to create doubt about God's goodness and God's word. When Satan appeared in the garden, it was with the intent to create doubt in the mind of the woman. He implied that God was withholding something from them, was keeping something good from them. His motive was to make God look bad, and his tool was a lie. Today, Thousands of years later, he's still employing that tool. You know why? Because it works. He's still employing the lies. He's still causing man to doubt God's goodness, doubt God's word, doubt God's very existence. That's why the believer has to be prepared for warfare. The enemy is ready, willing, and able. But we have to put on our fighting clothes, that armor that Paul wrote about in Ephesians, and we start by strapping on the belt of faith, putting on that belt and pulling it tight. We strap on that belt by knowing what the Word says. It's vital that we know 
what God has promised. That we understand what the word says. Because when we walk about in our world, when we go from place to place, when we visit our friends or, or talk to co-workers, we are the word for them at that point. And you never know when some of that truth that is in you needs to be applied. And it needs to be applied in many different situations. So we have to know what the word says. And we have to live as the word directs. We have to be who God says that we should be all the time. Not just between uh, 11 and 1 on Sunday. We have to be those living epistles, those examples of what the word says in our actions. So that others who don't know the word, others who are not uh, on the right track, will see that there's, there's something different about you. It's something different about the way you react. It's something different about how you respond in uh, these situations. Because wherever we are, people see you. People watch you. You say you are a child of the king. You say you are a believer. You say you are a Christian. Well, if that's the case, I want to be able to see that. We should be able to demonstrate that in how we live our lives. So we strap on that belt of truth by knowing what the word says and by living as the word directs. What you do speaks louder than what you say. And we strap on that belt of truth by worshiping God and witnessing to others of his love and truth. The worship is what rebuilds or refuels our engines. That worship is required. That worship is vital. Or we operate on empty, like getting up in the morning and not eating your breakfast. You know, I know the doctors say that that's, that's what you're supposed to do, and for years I didn't bother. But worship is what revives us, what keeps us moving, what gives us the power to go forth. And witnessing to others. I don't mean taking out your 40-pound Bible and waving it at people and talking about you need Jesus. That's, that's not the witness I'm talking about. The witness I'm talking about is living a genuine, real self in Christ. Being who God made you to be everywhere. Not just in church. Not just when you think somebody's looking, but everywhere, all the time. At home in your pajamas, you are still the same person as you are on Sunday morning. We have to be real in order to witness to others. We have to be genuine. We have to exemplify integrity. And that's what strapping on that belt of faith will allow us allow us to do. The belt of truth will allow us to be our genuine selves, who Christ made us to be. So it's not necessary to try to fit in every situation. Uh, Papa used to say, I am what I am. Well, in Christ, I am what I am. I am who he made me to be. And the key to that to being able to uh, put on the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation and all of the other pieces of the armor is to have that belt of truth strapped around your loins, knowing what the word says so that we can be who God made us to be. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, we just come today. We come, Lord, just thanking you for your word. Thanking you, Lord, that we have the opportunity, the, the, the freedom that comes from knowing your truth. Lord, we just are so grateful, so grateful for your word. Oh, God, we thank you 
that you give us the truth that does not change. Lord, seems like everything else in our lives comes and goes, but your word, your truth is eternal, and we thank you for that. And Lord, we pray that you will help us to strap on that belt of truth and live our lives in genuine authenticity so that others can see you in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. I will try.